quickly. So I would need a motion to approve the January 17 minutes, please. Bridget put the motion. Second. Trish, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Moved. We have a few guests here tonight, and I want to invite them up to give us a little uh, lowdown on what's going on. Uh, all of you know that the Grozeal Chaos soccer team is going to be doing their third, right, third, fourth tournament during Island Fest, and we want to bring up Mr. Kevin Naso. He is the president of the Giza Soccer Association. Come on up, Kevin. How are you tonight, sir? Good. Just give you guys a brief update. Um, right now, we're at 65 teams signed up. The max is 130. Um, we'll be, registration ends May 1st, but we'll probably hit 130 in probably the next two months. What we've also done this year was we opened it up to the rec program. So there will be three on three, four on four games for the young kids, four, five, six year olds, which will be ref by the parents. It, it won't be, you know, like the true tournament, but it'll be their own tournament. They'll all get medals and trophies, and, you know, it's more for the, the recreational program on the island. So we've got um, a lot of work to do between now and then. Um, Wendy was kind enough to hook us up again with the, the facilities. Um, I'll get with the township on the dumpster. You know, we'll have a better means of parking. I'm working out with Mr. Duker some stuff on land rental for the weekend. Um, but outside of that, it's going to be just as big as last year, if not bigger. Probably expect about five, 6,000 people between here and the high school or middle school because we play there to play there as well and not but we have to probably do bigger than that but we don't have enough manpower to to take care of it it's a lot of work mr from so. aren't you part of that that group yep. all right do you, um, when you say six thousand, does that include the team players too? All the team members? Yeah, you figure there's 130 teams. Average probably 10 to 12 kids per team, and then you factor in parents and their brothers and sisters. We'll have games. Fireworks are Saturday night. Yes, they. We'll are. have games Saturday night under the lights during fireworks. We did it last year. The kids seem to like it. Um, we'll do not playing. During the fireworks, y'all stop? Or? It sort of coincided, I think, with halftime, and I think the fireworks went off during halftime of the game, so it was sort of, sort of perfect. Now, we let the Gross Seal teams play, obviously, for preferential treatment. Um, we'll do it Friday night as well, and then Sunday we'll be out of here by 4 o'clock, cleaned up and gone. So. You've got the whole commission here behind you. We love that you guys bring them here during Thank Island you. Fest time. Um, it's just I don't want more to say. We need to push Questions? for funds to get those Good. kids over here riding rides and stuff and the adults enjoying a beverage and shopping a little bit. I know you will be. <laughs> I'll, be over, I'll be over there. <laughs> John's so. got a comment for you. Um, with the expansion of the tournament, and you're talking about land contracts with the, the airport, is that going to take add more fields? Is it going to take away from parking? What's the, the plan no, for the, that? The intent is to, we utilized uh, south of the sled hill. We had a field last year. So on the south of the trees, there's enough area to put smaller fields for the younger kids to play. We never parked over there. Um, we parked, um, I guess it would be east of the sled hill, that area, and left that field open. But everybody parks generally right outside here. So That'll be addressed at tomorrow's meeting, John. <laughs> Community Rock, too. Yeah. Is that to come tomorrow night, too? Yeah, um, no, you're good. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Thanks, guys. Hey, how'd you Kevin. do in Orlando, real quick? Can you update us about I know they went down uh, and played. For those who don't know, the Gross Seal team was down in Orlando this week at the ESPN Soccer Showcase. Um, 40, there's 14 girls. One girl, unfortunately, got hurt two weeks before the tournament, but she still went. Um, had a really good showing. Um, we ended up winning one, tying one, and unfortunately, in the last two minutes of our last game, we lost, or they scored a goal and knocked us out of the, the finals. But um, met a bunch of teams down there that are actually coming to the Island Cup from Virginia. A um, couple of them from Florida are coming because they've got family members that live up here. So it, it went a long way. I mean, it was pretty pretty good experience for for the girls, um, they enjoyed it, and unfortunately, they were very upset they lost. But, but it's the game. 
the experience. Uh, heads up, so. Jim Cordes told me they have a few rooms still available over at the pilot house. Just a couple days ago, he told me that. He goes, is that soccer tournament going on? I said, oh, yeah. He said, because he fills up with you guys over there. So okay. I'm sure the lodging. Once the team start, once the team start calling in, um, we used to bargain or negotiate room rates with hotels in the area, but we just leave it up to everybody now. But once the one team, they'll take the whole place up if they get in early enough. So, okay. I had a okay. question, uh, Kevin. When you talked about um, you know doing the rec, the little guys and um, the rec program, are you looking to utilize the airport fields for the little guys? Is that we talk little guys for adding that? Yeah, it would be like three on three games, which is probably equates to the size of this your 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 bench here. Okay, so that's what that's what we'll go over there. Okay, it's probably t twenty yards long by maybe fifteen yards wide. Okay, Put and fields over there. Will you be running those games all weekend, the little guys? Probably just Saturday. Just Saturday. Yeah. Okay. And then what time will be the first game on Friday, roughly? Probably 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Okay. The latest will. The last game will be at as long as we get the lights. The latest game will start at 10. And same thing on Saturday. Then Sunday we try to get out of here by five six o'clock. Okay. So we get everything cleaned up. Got it. Question to the hours because the midway wants to know too. We're trying to figure out what hours would be best to open early or stay until midnight. Well, Sunday the games always start at eight o'clock on Saturday and Sunday. Actually, actually probably earlier than that. Probably seven thirty. It will be our first game. As soon as the sun comes up, we start playing because there's so many games to get in, and then we'll play till eleven o'clock at night Saturday. If you're having, do they still do the pancake breakfast? On Sundays, they do. We have not. Something? We've tried it the last couple of years, and it just didn't seem to be a big thing. And last year, they were actually given away on Sunday. So, yeah, well, we can do a better job of, of obviously people see the carnival going on. But I can tell you, there will be a coffee bar and a an, uh, lemonade. You saw you saw the pictures right where your house, your clubhouse or facility is over there. And they know that you start early. I said seven a.m. I'd be up and ready, or at least you know those coffee people. They know all that. So. The two okay. trailers from Paint the Town. Cool. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Here's Kevin. Kevin. No problem. See you guys. Okay. Kyle Debosay has recently put in applications for a few commissions, and his family has a lot of history with Westcroft. And I'm going to let Kyle talk here for a little bit. And, and Hi, everyone. Um, many of you knew my aunt Denise, uh, who retired recently. She's now in Tennessee. We're still hopeful we can bring her back and fully honor her for the 30 years she put into to Westcroft Gardens. Um, but as many of you know, my uh, great-grandfather Ernie is the one who started growing azaleas and rhododendrons at Westcroft Gardens, which the Azalea Festival was, was first and now is Island Fest. I know my aunt Denise was a part of this commission at certain points, and uh, and Chad invited me here just to talk to you all and just talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm really happy to say that uh, we're now the eighth generation at Westcroft, still still working to keep it going. My wife Jennifer and I are at the old Stan Rucker house renovating that. And my cousin Erica, who's also eighth generation, is working um, managing Westcroft currently and helping us find a good way forward. Um, but yeah, I'm just here to, to, to express our support, you know, in any way that we can. And um, I know I've been doing the parade over the last couple of years. It's always a great time. Um, and, uh, and yeah, just wanted to say hello to everyone. Chad invited me. I'm really happy to be here and just see everything and, and see you all. Yeah. I thought how full circle with that. And I know I talked to some of you before about, you know, Kyle. It started with his family back in 82, 84. And it's just evolved into this big event down here. And we thank you most of the time <laughs> for what you guys have done for this great event. So, uh, no, it's, it's all good. No, it's, ama it's amazing to see how much it's grown and everything. That I so now you all got a face to the name on those applications that you get to go through. And um, we'd be really excited to have you, I know, be part of our group and help us through the ways. And Any questions for Kyle? You all know what Westcroft Gardens is, right? <laughs> no, okay. Thanks, Thanks Kyle. Appreciate Thank you. Kyle. Okay, that wraps up our two guests there. We're going to go on with my report. If you look, um, if you guys in the prompting room up there can click onto this website that I'm showing, we can show the folks at home. This is GrozilleIslandFest.com. It's really easy to go on here. Uh, you can even Google Island Fest 2018. It will pop up. I did a presentation two weeks ago about this, and it's really easy to navigate. Homepage. Click on Schedule. 
and this is updated every week, and it will be updated daily as the event gets closer. It has a, a time frame for each day of the week, obviously. Each day of the week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The cost for the rides and carnival are up there. The bands that are going to be highlighted. We still have a little bit of an opening that we're going to discuss in a minute. If you click on applications, it takes you to exhibitors. If you want to be a vendor inside or outside the hangar, you click on exhibitor. If you want to be in the parade, you can click on that. Sponsorships, we need lots of sponsors this year. We'll talk about that in a minute. And volunteers, I want to thank Trish Eblen over here because her and Wendy got this up together. Let's see if it's on here with Shane. Props to Shane. I know he's not doing well, but uh, he's our website guy. All right, so it's not up yet. He promised me it'll be live in the next day or two. So you can go on up or, um I should have had you do this, Trish. Because now I'm lost. Volunteer. Oh, my God. That's the last thing I went up there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> what did I... Uh... All right, so... Full of color, I guess. Yeah. Links. Template. Anybody in that room over there know what I'm doing up here? Close current tab. Mike, anyways, go to GrossillIslandFest.com. All the info is up there. It's, it's updated all the time. We've got lots of cool things coming up for that. Um, we also have uh, talked to these uh, two 10-year-old twin boys. Their name is Mir They're called Amir Image. Um, I discussed with a few of you uh, noon to 1 on Sunday where we're looking for somebody to open up for the Beatles man. I really recommend these kids. They're really good. They played at Paint the Town Red. Uh, that was on the Rotary Sunday, right, that they performed. And they were, uh, everybody seemed to like it. Toward the EL. Toward the EL. Okay. So, all right. Can I get this website back up here? I need to show some people this stuff. Um, the new coming to 2018 is the foam slash paint glow party. Foam as an F O A M, not foam like you're talking on your phone. Foam party. So, there you go. Thanks. <clears throat> what it is is Friday night from 7 to 11 on the north side of the hangar. So you get the big entertainment tent on the south side, the north side. There'll be a huge stage, tent, um, a techno DJs, um, and then they put these all this lights and stuff, and they put big cannons over top of you all. So when the cannons are turned on, they blow foam. It's an all-age thing. We recommend bringing the little ones earlier in the evening. It opens at 7 p.m. There is no charge for these events. This is something we're bringing to festival. It is all ages. And then Saturday night is a glow and paint party. Same area. You get out in the dance area. They take these big neon things filled with paint. And they spray it all over you and turn on lights and all that. That's going to run from 8 to midnight on Saturday. So mom and dad can be in the back. And then, thank you, sir. And then the... Um, teens and etc can be up on the north side of the hangar like i said i really recommend that you bring the little ones earlier to these two events because the foam's probably deep and the paint's probably bright <laughs> any questions on foam and paint party this year for island fest well let's hope that's a um everyone knows the fireworks have been changed to saturday june 2nd we decided the commission made a decision to change the fireworks from friday night to saturday which is going to be even more spectacular because you won't be rushing home from work on Friday night to get down here with the family. So make sure you come down Saturday night for the fireworks. Mark that in your calendars, June 2nd. You just heard from Giza Soccer. Um, as you know, we're doing the beer refreshments and spirits at this year's Island Fest. I want to give a shout out to Island Roots. What's his name now? Bridget. We were talking with them at the Rotary thing. I can't think it was... Richard Island Roots, five years in business on Crozeal. Why can't I think of his name? Um, they're they're going to do some water features for us inside the hangar, which I thought was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have like ponds and little waterfalls and all that. Yeah, Rich Brower. Thank you, yeah, Rich Brower. <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Brower. <laughs> Props. So I'm really excited about that. I know this is more of an official televised meeting, but you know me and the waterfalls and the all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's going to go in with the spirits area. VIP. We, we haven't come up for any ideas of the runway usage. If we do, we do. If we don't, we still have a runway at our disposal if we want to come up with something cool. So any input out there, positive, we would like that. 
And um, that's all I have for my chairman's report because we got stuff listed down here. So let's move on to Mr. Nelson Township Liaison's report, sir. No report tonight. No report tonight. Okay. Thank you for all you do and all you're doing. And Jim and everybody else, we're rock and roll. That's my report. Do we have um, action items? There's nothing to vote on. Kim, are you on here for, is there supposed to be a rec update? That's rec commission. That's tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. But I, I do want to say um, to the commission, I apologize for not being the last couple of meetings. Um, I mean, I work with Chad every day. He's filled me in. I've kept up to date with everything. Um, and after being here for nine months, um, what all of you do for this town is off the charts, in my opinion. Um, and I mean that sincerely. This event, this three-day event, there's, it's so much to do. And Chad, I can't thank you enough for doing this. It is all you do. I mean, he's in my office every single day, texting me at 9 o'clock at night, what are we thinking? And, you know, but to all of you, I just want to say thank you for what you do. Um, you know, even as a resident and a, and a, a, a young person on the island, my daughter, she loves the event and um i just wanted to say thank you so and i'll do everything i can with along with uh with jim to support all the decisions that you make um you know i'm fine tuning the budget chad and i kind of put that together this afternoon um you know and and make things go really well and pray for no rain so but i just want to say thank you so discussion items Trish and Wendy, do you want to give us an update on the volunteer sign-up? I mean, I know it's not up here yet, but do we, uh, so there's a paragraph. Explain how that works, Trish, would you? Well, um, yeah, I set it up on um, signup.com, um, which is a volunteer sign-up where people can sign up themselves. Um, so we'll put the link out. It'll be something people can forward or post on their Facebook page to try to get their friends and family members to sign up, and then we can put it on the link. So it's really nice because it's a live, real-time sign-up that we can keep track of and run reports from. So that, that got set up this week. It was um, based on what we did last year. So if there's some changes, we can still make tweaks, but I think at least kind of the, it's in place and ready to go. So you go on there, you pick what you want to do. Right. There's a small paragraph that says what it is what it entails, happy people, if it involves lifting or moving things, if it's an info booth, et cetera, et cetera. You enter your email address, you enter your email address one more time, and then it automatically hooks you up. Okay, so I got one sent to my email. Whose email does that go to that says, is it one of yours? No, that's what I was suggesting to you, that we might not want all of them to go to yours, but that's how it's set up now since you're the owner of the account. Okay, well, we need to change it. Yeah, that's, what, that's where I was kind of suggesting that we might want to set it up under somebody else's. Or we can turn off, we, I'll look, we can probably turn off notifications. Or we can it, do something to rec. Yeah, I mean, I can take those too. Because I yeah. come in every day. And I mean, I, I, like to, I like to be able to go back and see who's signing up and where we. Right, and you can do that did. just by looking. Yeah, that's, oh, okay. you, you can just go on and look. But yeah, we can look at that. We, it's probably possible to just turn off the notifications. I just left it set up like it was last year. But uh, I'll look at that this evening. Signup.com? Signup.com. You're mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. And then <clears throat> I did meet with um, Pam Rieger. Oh, sorry. No, you can hear through when you talk. <clears throat> Pam Rieger, who runs the um, Builders Club through the middle school. And um, they're going to partner with us to help with parking and set up and clean up. So we'll have a, a – they, they helped with us last year, but they're going to take a bigger role this year and help us. I thought they were like little, little kids, builders. No, middle, middle school. That's going to be great for Chief Porcerelli and his group to hear that, and all of us, that we have help with the first hour or two to assign those cars where they're going. And we are doing a donation of that group, right? Yes. Very good. And she's already announced it to the kids, and they're excited to sign up. So, <laughs> okay. yes. Builders Club, thanks. Okay. Are you guys good? Mm -hmm. So Bridget Hurst is in charge of bartenders' wristbands, like she's done the past few years, and she's great at it. That is one thing. We do not have the bartender situation online for that. I think we would rather not do that. We'll stick to what we know. And the wristbands, anything you want to 
anything you want to how many people you think you need per night um friday our four hour shifts four to eight eight to midnight so yeah, I'm, I would prefer to have three people in there for wristbands, for wristbands all right Sure. For, for this year a little bit? Well, we were talking about putting that or those wristbands back in the in the hangar in that corner because there will be spirits in the hangar and then the beer is going to be outside. So, you know how we, I think it was two years ago we did yeah. that. Yeah. And that way, I, I, it's going to get backed up at one time no matter what because it always does. But I agree with the three people. Maybe do like just two people for the first two hours, bring in the third one around seven, and then you got three from seven to 11, and then bring it back down to two. Well, it would help, too, knowing that, and I know it's Friday, everybody gets paid, it would help, you know, if somebody stops somewhere and breaks a couple dollars or something, <laughs> and, and maybe has an exact change, because we can get people through the line a lot faster, because people can go out with there in the line with the wristbands, if you have exact change, and just start getting them out and getting them through a lot quicker, too. More so wristbands are your checking ID too. So I want to make yes, that known for anybody the out ID there. Well. We will give you a quick little tutor when you come to do that thing about how to read an ID and et cetera, et cetera, and because it's pretty important. It's very important for safety. Have we ever thought of having the wristband location or like have different locations rather than them come to one spot? It's manpower getting the volunteers to. Because if you had three volunteers. Right, but I think at the spirits area, we should sell wristbands too, and not just at the tent. And we've always left the option to the people at the beer area if they were going to, they're more than welcome to purchase those and have those on And hand they too. have. They've come over yeah. and they, they'll grab a whole bunch, take them back to the beer tent, and help us out because Friday nights are the craziest night. Which this year may be Saturday with the fireworks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This year it might be both. Who knows? Hopefully. Hopefully, you know. So yeah, they do help out. Yeah. What about the uh, information booth? Would that be an option? That would be a good option, actually. I don't know if I want to sit anybody up there. I, I hate to say this, Grozeal, but do we want to sit somebody up there in the dark with cash? <laughs> There's a lot of traffic where they're going to be. But, I mean, that's I, you know. kind of where you know I was hubbed around, and there were police walking and. It's a thought to add another location because there's always somebody at that info booth just to have another location, just an idea. I think that's a great idea because as folks are dropping off their young ones to go to the foam party and the paint party, they'll be right there to get their wristband to continue on to have an adult yeah, beverage. And then you're in and you've yeah. got your, the people, people that are entering know they're going to have a beer right. or a spirit, so... Why not I think it's it our challenge. And call it a day. It would be our challenge now to staff it, but I, th I think that's a great. Especially now since we have two different areas, one for spirits and one for beer. That's a good point up there, though. I t yeah, because we do have something going on this year. I forgot about that. Last year it was like nothing, so right. I apologize for my comment. Like I remember, because that's like I said, I was kind of up there, kind of floating back and forth. And again, there was always somebody there. Like Gail was there. We and after we got everybody checked in, the vendors. There was a lot, I don't want to say downtime, but there was some free time for them to be able to help out. Free time mm -hmm. right. in the latter part of the day, and that's when we everything, help the most. that's when you need the help, so. Yeah, definitely. I know I agree. And seeing how the risk being is part of our profit area, that should, yeah, okay. I think so that would be a good idea to have two areas. I think we had we two can. up there. No and Kim, I'm what. sure you have a note from last year how to rectify the the bank situation that we were the dilemma running That's, yeah, running no. back and forth to to make the change. So yeah. I'm sure this year will be much better. Way better. That's why I think the spirits is a good thing too because we will be dealing with singles we have and that issue be able to, yeah. in great depth already. But, yes. Yeah, yeah because, because that, that was pretty problematic. Yeah. <laughs> yep, we'll take care of that. <laughs> Thanks. You mentioned Friday hours. What about Saturday and Sunday as far as hours for volunteers for wristband? I would think start at noon. I mean, doesn't everybody go to the parade? I know there's going to be people across the street. Mm -hmm. Is Dad going to want to come have a beer at 11 a.m.? Oh, that's all right, but I don't know. What do you, what you're, I'm thinking noon to 4, 4 to 8, and 8 to 12. I'm usually there. I'm usually early, so... 
soccer parents don't mind drinking beer at 11 o'clock. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's why they carry those cups, special cups. So. <laughs> All right, what about Sunday? Noon to four. So that's actually, that's like one, two, three, that'll be four places wristbands will be accessible. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even the beer people need to, you know, just have a little, I took that class, uh, total or techniques in alcohol management, so I'm a registered TAM card holder for three years, and I know, I'm supposed to know about the product, you know, of someone being intoxicated and how to handle situations and call my friends here, help. <laughs> So, so if you're looking to bartend out there, you can look at all of us too, because we uh, we would like to talk to you people out there, moms and dad. 18, you have to be 18 to do that. And uh, wristbands, I don't think there's any. Well, I'd say 18 to sell wristbands too. But those are fun, fun, high energy areas. <clears throat> you got those hours, Madam Secretary? Uh -huh. Alrighty. Mr. Fulmer, since you weren't at the last meeting, we assigned you parade. No. <laughs> Punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fun. And Todd Fournier, I know you're back in that office laughing right now because I know you're here tonight. So um, I don't know a lot about it because I'm usually emceeing, but I know that they meet between the middle school and the high school. And uh, Wendy, you know about this parade? No, I'm, I've just been in it. and we've, yeah, you, Depending on how many people are in it, they split um, you up. Isn't that your expertise? Parades? No. <laughs> well, he's got bands. So. <laughs> yeah, not tonight. So what do we need to have George do? Well, we, I mean, we have the list from last year of the, you know, we, we did have some outside groups that, you know, we did have to pay for, the Shriners and so forth. We have that list. Um, those um, groups need to be contacted, and you can either contact Chad or I. We have the list. <laughs> um, and then I would say any um, application that comes in, Obviously, you can download the application on the website. Where those should be turned in? Where, Chad? Did they normally? They they came to the rec, I believe, from my memory last year. And the ladies down there assigned them a, a slot in the parade, which right. So I think as far like rec handles, kind of gathering all the information and so forth. Um, and once we have all those applications, I believe Gail was on that last year, if I'm not mistaken, and Annette in my office. Then we'll coordinate with you, and then when the parade is, you know, we would be down there. You'd have to line everybody up and make sure everybody's where they're supposed to be. So, okay. Um, but once people are assigned a slot, everybody knows where to go. It's mm -hmm. kind of. But somebody from the middle school and somebody from the high school, right? So that's two different parking lots. So I don't know where we would station him. And what it is is like when, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's like one, two, three, four. And then if somebody comes in a little late that you want to put them towards the head, it would be like 2B, 3B, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, obviously you don't want to put horses behind the bands or in front of them to spook them. <laughs> Or step in anything. We'll have parade training in about a week, for the week beforehand. But you know, there's um, um, a couple of people that I've talked to that have helped with parades in the township, and obviously I'm going to reach out to them. I've I've done a few lineups myself, but um, obviously you need to know what you're doing. So we'll work together on that um, and just make it work. So because we've done the parade for um, homecoming and so forth. So yeah, there's a certain way to do it, and we'll give you that information to take care of that okay yep yeah you'll have a couple guys working with you down there but you just i would say drop in the rec department a couple times mm -hmm. a week or two before festival and see what's going on you should have a big binder but sometimes not so Who's doing the announcing? i don't know i don't i haven't been asked yet that's kind of well dumb. you already said you retired so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess somebody's waiting to th throw in front of Chad, and you'll say, okay. So somebody lay down and ask Chad to announce the parade. <laughs> George, will you throw down in front of Chad? <laughs> I guess that's what we need. <laughs> Molly. <laughs> oh, Molly. Oh, Molly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, John. Any more questions about the parade? This meeting's going pretty far. Mr. Bergen. Bands and stages. No update at this time. Everything's in order. So you're good with the uh, mirror image kids? Oh, yeah. The, they performed last year at the tour de Yale, so I'm real familiar with them. So they're good. And the 50 amp fuse we have for Friday night, 
I know there's a lot of 50 amp fans out there and in this room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and then Saturday's DR5. We had the children's choir booked for Friday. Um, Saturday between 5 and 8, we need to do something. So I've had a couple people calling me. Um, we can discuss it in March, I guess, of who we want to commit to. I know a lot of these bands, names have come up here and there, and we all need to come to a decision on who we're going to put and what we're going to pay for that time slot. And that is a prime time slot because it's Saturday night between 5 and 8. Obviously, you're open up for DR5, which is a great rock and roll band, and the fireworks. So there's going to be a lot of family here, I guess is what I'm saying. So, Ed, do you sir. know what, uh, a range, what you're going to pay for that yet or not? Um, no, we know what we're paying for the other ones, and I don't want somebody to come in and think they're going to get a big amount of money because of the time slot it is. But then we don't want anybody to come in that's not going to. We all get around to the clubs and stuff on Grozeal and that and, and, and Down River and areas like that. So some of the bands I thought were going to be good aren't because uh, they have a bigger draw somewhere else. We've tried that. And... Um, I just I don't want to start naming names on camera, so we will just uh, leave it at that. We will have to work up with the budget with that, huh? Is that the question? Yeah, I'll find <laughs> out from Alan David uh, what Phoenix Theory uh, would charge us. And we just said we didn't want to start naming names on camera. Because <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. find out from my friend's band <laughs> what he charges, and I'll I'll get to you. Thanks. Sorry, naming names. <laughs> Anything else, John? No. All right. Now her voice got so long. Ann's not here about the finances. Um, I will. Ch Chad, I have a question yep. on that line item. I don't know if it's now or if you want me to talk about budget at this point, but it's it's really odd for me to sit here and talk about what are we paying for a band when we really don't have an active budget and our director and chairman sat down today, but this commission that is ultimately responsible for the festival has no clue on the finances and to wait until March for the township board to approve an event that we've already pretty much cemented in seems a little odd to me and I don't know if we can fix that by approving a budget for 2019 simultaneously or not but when we talk about budgets, you know, we, we, we had budgets cut at the last minute entering last year's festival. What we thought as a commission was minus $5,000, and I guess I'm going to direct this to Jim, and, and, and I'm not sure if you can answer this or not, but I remember you saying that we took away 5000 from the f festival commission, but I'll get it back to you. In which that comment, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, any of the board members, am I correct on that comment? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so when they take away money weeks away from the event and say, well, we'll just put it back in, but you made X amount of dollars, I, I just, we're, we're kind of juggling money, you know. So I, I guess I would like to have a better idea of what the budget direction is going for this. Because it doesn't come out of any township funds or, or taxpayer money, correct? Correct. And we, we say we make a profit. <laughs> profit to what? You know, I mean, we're, we're, it, it's seed money for the following year. So I guess why are we now just talking about budget today for an event that's happening in a few months and that we're entering contracts? And two, if we enter a budget now, What's to say that the township board doesn't take away that funding at the last minute? And where does this money come from? Does it come from the rec department? Does it come from a nonprofit? Does it come out of our pockets? Where, where's this money come from if you take it away come budget time? There was 7,500, correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, that showed on the, on the report that the event made. No, no. The seventy five hundred was uh, in twenty sixteen is what the township board gave us. The township gave us. Okay, but you guys made money not last year, but the year before. We made some working capital this past festival to go towards this one. Yes. 
Okay. And that was when we were going to be in another deficit, deficit situation. And so we were all asked to cut something. And so I took the liberty before Kim was here uh, to take that $5,000 away because you had made enough money to cover your expenses. And February is budget month for the township, so that's why it's going on right now this week. Uh, maybe it should be earlier. We could probably do a two-year budget, like you said, at the same time. Uh, I will uh, work very hard to put that $5,000 back in there tomorrow. Well, I, I just, one is that we say we made capital. What what money did we invest? We, all we did was make <coughs> enough to cover our, our initial expenses for this year, correct? Yeah, he, Jim, that needs to be rephrased because you said we made enough to pay the bills. We did not make nearly enough to pay the bills, but... No, the issue is this. Uh, through the years, right or wrong, good or bad, not everything that should be expensed to the festival gets expensed to the festival. So if the police don't charge us for all their overtime, whatever that number is, which they don't, but if they did, you can see that, you know, there's an expense right there that would be there that it's not sure. there right now. So it's a misnomer to say you made $10,000 when you didn't have to pay for police protection or whatever else we get from some other account. Uh, I mean, it's nice to look at those numbers and say, this is great, we made ten grand or thirteen grand or whatever, but we really didn't. One well, in the grand scheme of things, and that, and that's my my concern is when we start cutting and saying, well, we, we you showed a profit, so we took five thousand away because of it. Right. You, you, I, I guess my concern is is that what happens in a month from now when the budget doesn't get approved to where we're at. Who's going to pay for our headliner on Friday night? Who's going to pay for the fireworks? Are we going to be sitting out there with buckets, you know, <laughs> asking our, our residents, please contribute, or the band's not going to play? You know, I, I just, I, it's it's just too risky. It's like me going to buy a house and go to the closing and not know if I'm financially approved until they, they actually say, here you go, and it, the, the deal could go south at any moment. I, I'm not comfortable with that. So, you know, if we can move forward in the future to look for a two-year um budget or approving a budget for the the preceding year but this is more than just island fest this is a festival commission correct and the festival commission is responsible for festivals on the island and the the plan you know we had a, a brainstorming idea to put on various festivals um hopefully the winter festival will, will come back next year but the uh partnering with Paint the Town Red or various functions like that. We have to have some type of, of money to do, put on these events. So I, I, it's, I'm, I'm not really clear on when we say we put together the budget today. It's not going to be approved until the board approves it down the road. So why are we entering and adding another band between five and eight on Saturday night? Well, uh, the I, only I'm right. going to interrupt though. The only and again the missing piece is Ann Darzniak, our finance director, to answer all of those questions. Um, you know, and again, right now we are operating within what we were given last year. Okay, and that that is our safe means right now. With my conversations with Ms. Darzniak, also Jim. Where to, you know that's where we're we're staying within our means. Meaning, I've asked Chad not to go above. I think it was sixty nine five or whatever it was, um, sixty three. Uh, so that's kind of what we're operating in right now. But I agree with you. Two years, it should be done. But I can't speak for the finance director who's not present. I think she should be the one to answer those questions to you. So well, I think they also the this commission should be approving the the budget that goes for. Forward. You should be part of that process. Yeah, it, it, Absolutely. It, it, yeah. So today's discussion, we should that have today had. Today was we preliminary. Should, okay, preliminary. Okay. It's not a final. W when's it going to be final to go to the, ready to the board? As we, I start with my process tomorrow with Ann and uh, township board members. 
um, and festival is part of that. So there's different stages. And this is my first budget process. Mm -hmm. Please understand that. So the way I understand it, I go tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I talk about the community rec and festival is included in that because festival is under the umbrella of rec. And that's Your my part. concern too. Is that if if this we have bad weather, what's that going to happen? Our, Correct. What will be the, the backup the, plan? And those yeah. are the dis those are my questions as well. So yeah. so how's it going to affect your? Correct. It, it almost should be two separate budgets. It, sh it should not bleed into the rec department. Right. Festival has their own line items. Okay. So. Okay. It's so, all um, March thirty first is the deadline to have the budget approved. So we have to have the budget approved by the board by March 31st because the, so, the new fiscal year starts April 1st. Here's what I see when, when these numbers have been coming. And, and John, honestly, this is the first year I've been involved with the budget process. Kim's brought me in. I'm, oh, that's I'm great. excited and I'm one of, I should be more of this, but obviously we had no rec director a couple of years. But that being said, the numbers that we work with are what the township I guess predicts. Is, is that the only way I can see is from year to year. So. The one that we're trying to get approved in March is pretty much based off of numbers from last year. But, and I'm just, I'm not saying this is what we made or what kind of working capital. Let's say that festival cost $85,000 to throw last year, all right? But you're looking at a budget of 65000 and you're like, holy moly, holy moly. Um, that, uh, that, that, but then... After the festival's done and we got beautiful, had beautiful weather all weekend, and you look at ninety nine thousand, you know that was actually produced, and then you pay the bills of eighty five thousand, leaves you with working capital for the next year. But yeah, if it doesn't go through and we have lousy weather, it goes to wreck. So, um, I don't know. Is there anything else we should know about numbers this year, or are we all good? Yeah, I think. Um you know, I will meet with Ann tomorrow at 10, and those are those questions that I will bring to her. I want to definitely have the right answers for everybody in this room and also our community. But again, I can't answer. I'm not the finance director. I'm the rec person. So, but John, you have good questions. Um, and I thought about that as well. So, you know, how do we, how do we, I wouldn't mind putting together a two-year budget. I think it should be done if we continue this. Um, I don't, do not see Island Fest going away. I, I, it needs to stay, so we need to have... That's my, my point, is that... Correct. W w and it's not just Island Fest, it's I the Festival Commission. Right. So when we put this, when you're, you're doing this discussion tomorrow, what budget is being put in? We, we keep talking about we're putting X amount of dollars for Island Fest. What other funds or money are coming to put on other festivals for this commission down the road past Island Fest. Right. If, REC if has their own, REC has a line for special events. Okay. Meaning I have my own account line with a certain dollar amount in there. But that's REC. But this, the, you know, the, the, right, I, but what if, I'm asking if, is that, that, you know, this commission seems to be a, a non-working commission. We, we, we work our butts off, but we, we don't have, we don't know what's, what we don't know. You know what I'm saying? Is that, you're, you're telling us we have a budget of what, though? A budget in the rec department has X amount of dollars to do what with to put on a fall festival or a winter festival? So you or, want or, me or, to present a number to you for this one particular event? Is that what no, I'm trying to... No, it should be multiple events. It's we, multiple events is what I'm saying. Is that we're, 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 we're addressing one, but really we have to look at a budget for you know the Halloween event that we were, we're talking about trying to do. We, we'd love to, to partner with Paint to Town Red and the Girls Hill Rotary and the uh, DDA, uh, all these other yes. groups to, to, to put on great community events, which we are the Festival Commission. But if we don't have a budget, how can we put this on other than a boot drive, you know, contribute. So, so Correct. that's all I'm asking is that, that if there's a budget, it, it should be a working session, probably not at this meeting tonight, but it, it needs to be discussed amongst this commission and approved by this commission. Okay. Right. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. And once you look at their, uh, the festival ordinance, I don't have it with me, it says that this group is a festival. The festival commission is to produce the, one, the big event which is the Island Fest event and possibly other events throughout the year. And that I agree with John. I mean, I don't know how we can go into thinking about something in September when we don't have any money sitting there, what we can spend or anything like that, you know? And There's money in the rec budget as well that is set aside for events. And, and let's just say that we just have another bang-up year, just outstanding. I'd like to see that we 
have an account that's set up for, you know, maybe a, a, a rainy day next year. Rollover. Uh, Rollover mm-hmm. and, 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 and invest, you know. I mean, some of our signs are pretty old. We haven't updated a lot of stuff. And it just kind of goes from year to year, beg, borrow, and steal from around. And I think that, you know, we should be looking at reinvesting some of the funds if we should be fortunate enough to, to turn a profit uh, on this one event. Maybe we don't make a profit. Maybe we balance, and that's great, too. But maybe we make a, a profit at our, our September event that's being kicked around, you know, um, the, the Halloween party extravaganza. Maybe that turns the profit that money needs to be allocated towards the commission to continue for future years to put on these events for the community. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a rainy day fund that, you know, we could each year it'd add to. A fund. Because there's there's <laughs> no care. So, so sponsors, it's so yeah, important we need to that you guys come out and sponsor us. Let it be financial or in-house, in-kind. We need sponsors, vendors, right. please. Yeah. Um, Survival Island Fest, Trish, I think John kind of brought up what you had mentioned at last month's meeting that you thought you were coming on for a festival commission. It's more than just Island Fest. <clears throat> um, and going forward, that's what mm-hmm. I'd like to do. I want to do Halloween. I want to do Paint the Town Red. And I want to do, you know, a lot of good things and, and, and generate revenue so that we can do all these. So I know that we all understand what John asked. And so we'll get answers. In, in the past, have you, has this, Body approved the festival commission budget. We just proved like what we spent for uh, fleece and and stuff. Yeah, was over a certain amount, we have to go in front. But as far as sitting down and having all the numbers, I mean, yeah, I have everything broken down, and it is available in that little the the booklet you get from the uh, what is it the yearly budget booklet. The, yeah, the budget booklet. Yeah. So it's I mean it's all in there, and like what Chad and I are doing now is you know every dollar track it and there's a spreadsheet so we know exactly where we're at um and again i came in late last year everything was kind of done but now we we we're watching every penny that we spend we have to you know and there's no way to do these events at all without sponsorship we can't afford it i mean that's that's reality um so when when chad says we need you we need you we do this is a huge huge event and without the sponsorships, it can't be done. So we are reaching out. How do how do we get to the sponsors? You know, we're sending letters. We're reaching out. And again, this isn't this is everybody involved with this one. This is the big one. So that's. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but Carl Bletcher, one of my colleagues on the township board. Uh, is in favor of charging for parking. <laughs> I know it would be might be a nightmare to. Uh, logistically do all that but it's a significant chunk of change if you did it well first of all we can't man an info booth hardly so i can't imagine getting parking <laughs> attendants we got to pay for them second of all if we went out and hired a company to come do it they're going to keep the majority of the money i don't think they're going to say oh here let's give some dialing fast you know to hire a but we will take that into consideration it's worth looking at yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely that's all thanks carl <laughs> did we ask the vip prime parking fees not yet. You and I will go walk that property once the snow melts. Oh, it's melted. <laughs> it's between here and airport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, this is a big one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what is that, 9G? I need to start wearing glasses. All safety and fallout information, if needed, from all commissioners. I know we talk about this every year and stuff, and, and I'm sure if you remember a couple of years ago, it was crazy stormy out here and we need to have not just our little earphone microphones and megaphones but there has to be a, a, a disaster plan i don't know what to call it it's an emergency action plan I mean, we got the water just half a mile out there and and it's just an and the hangar is a fallout shelter right and i'm pretty sure this building is except all the windows um, but we really need to have a plan in place for all of us to know if something's going to happen, where we need to send people. Our <laughs> chief, I believe. Puts yeah, would that be a, okay, uh, a... Yeah. Yeah, between the, the PD and the, the fire department and us creating, you know, knowing what it is that they need us to do. Let's make sure, Chad, we add that to the agenda for the next meeting, and we will invite police and fire to attend and get that 
Well, I know, um, excuse me, I know Susie's out of town, but she's our liaison for the police department. And, okay. Uh, I'll invite them. But I, yeah, absolutely, somebody yep. from Duncan and Rusty and those guys. All right. Do we, uh, Trish, you got anything you want to add in here? No, I guess only you and I talked a little bit about it on the phone this week. Um, I reached out to um, the chairman who plans the um, foundation fundraiser, and one of the things she um, said to me is there's a real opportunity for all the community groups to work together. So just something to think about. She said even like an annual meeting or something where we get together and we can coordinate our, each other's events. You know, she said they're a little limited, like they used to do a fall event, but... Um, the teachers say it's too close to the start of school, so that's why they moved to May. They butt up against, like, the athletic booster in March. So, you know, it can be a struggle to pick. But she thought there was some opportunity for us as community groups to kind of share and support each other. Um, and there's, you know, a unique opportunity. Their event is a couple weeks before ours, that there might be a way to promote Island Fest and even ask for volunteers, you know, have a sign-up there or something. So just something to think about for the next meeting. Um, I, I think, and what Trisha is talking about too, we need some kind of community calendar so we don't have all these different events overlaying each other or, or at least have a heads up about different ones. And um, because the Education Foundation is a great group, and they do their fundraiser in May. We got Island Fest in for beginning of June. So, <clears throat> but there's a lot of different, uh, there's a few groups that need to get together and just say, okay, this is what's going on this year. We're all vying for the same sponsors. Right. I mean, they, oh, they do a great job of getting sponsors for their event in May. So we're all vying for the same sponsors, and there's only so much to go around. So. Good. Miss Wendy? Nope, I don't think so. Do you want to give a shout-out about your thing you got coming up? Since you're on camera, if you all have any events or something, right, we can give a shout-out to our <laughs> groups. Don't you have to have a, <laughs> it's coming up in March, the PTA thing or PAT? Oh, yeah, PAT, yeah. We're actually looking at scheduling changes because the Boy Scouts apparently have a huge dinner that night. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, no. Right. We're having the rainforest folks coming in to do a assembly for the kids, but we're looking at a different date now since <laughs> the Boy Scouts have their blue and gold banquet at Crystal Gardens. <laughs> so, Where do they have it at? Crystal Gardens. So... I'm changing that. Are you good? Yep, I'm good. Thanks. Mr. Bergen, John? I'm good. Bridget? I'm good. Mr. George? I just had a question uh, for Trish about the um, the Builders Club sign-up for the kids. Mm -hmm. Are they signing up, the volunteers that we have for parking, are they signing up through Builders Club or through the sign-up? Builders Club. Builders, Builders Club? Club. Yeah. Okay. The, the sign-up will be more for uh, community members. Yep, okay. Yeah. For donating money, fin or finances to the Builders Club. So they okay. can buy shirts or something. Yeah. And this may sound crazy, but last year when I was at the soccer, par doing parking for uh, soccer, <clears throat> there were people, believe it or not, that didn't seem to be aware of a big festival going on over here near soccer kids. That seems odd, but I'm thinking maybe we have a big sign over there that says big festival this way. Well, there's a big <laughs> flash in one, right? And you come down Maca or Meridian Road. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. There were people that, when I was parking, I'm talking to these people, hey, you going over, you know, across the city? And they're like, what's going on over there? They didn't know. Didn't see the big Ferris wheel? Yeah, on there. people are oblivious. Oh. I don't know. Is there is there anything on the website that for Island Cup that says there's a festival? Like, Absolutely. upon we're, the registration? Our, and The whole soccer tournament is based on the festival as the backdrop for it. That's what kind of brings them, you know, because it's right. You know, an that's awesome what I'm weekend. thinking. So I'm trying to figure out how they wouldn't know. Look I don't know logo. how they wouldn't know, but that's why I, I know that people. Not all of them. I mean, <laughs> but there were a handful of people that I spoke with that hadn't been over here, didn't know about it, weren't planning on coming over. So maybe we can advertise a little bit over there, and, and maybe okay. you know what I mean. Don't yeah. they all get a brochure when they uh, when they uh, pull, when they register something? Why can't we do a full page Island Fest ad in that? We, we we don't no we don't no. have much that we give them <laughs> no <laughs> and sometimes the team managers don't give it out till yeah later um, I think the sign's a good idea maybe featuring some of the things that are over there like beverages or 
something. Just a so sign. Surprise, don't give it away over here. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but you know what? Oh, yeah, if you come down crazy, West but, River, you, know, we you can kind of turn we do in have the a back brochure. way. And if you're just kind of focused. We, we do have a packet really that we could, give them, but we may, really may not, may not do that this year because it's pretty expensive to print. Bridge, come down and people West like River and Trish said they just throw in the garbage. So, But I'll, I'll let you know on that. Maybe we do advertise in that. <clears throat> I'm thinking that... Uh, what, what, why do we keep calling it that? What's that house over there where you have your equipment and all that? Clubhouse? It's not ours. Clubhouse? A clubhouse? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm thinking a big banner facing the fields up on that building. <laughs> Who runs that? Gyra, Giza, all of you? Mm -hmm. Not us, Gyra. Gyra. You know what I'm talking about on one side? all the graffiti. Highlight some of the things we have over here other than rides, you know. Mm hmm. Beverages, yeah. Yeah, I, I still hear from the vendors, too, uh, that, you know, we need to have a way to draw people into that big hangar. You know, we need to, because a lot of the kids that do know about it over here, they just seem to cross the street right here. And then, but once again, we have a, we got two big events going on in that parking lot, so that should bring them up. And, and we really want to stress all our exhibitors that are going to be having their wares and things down there that there's going to be no parking inside this big, ha or this uh, parking lot over here. It's like drop your stuff off, go in, and then you're going to have to park somewhere else. So, which I'm all for, but especially with all those things going on. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to the Knights of Columbus who are doing their fish fries on Friday nights. You know, from now through Easter, I believe they do a good thing. And um, Mr. Evans, did you have something you want to put up here? <laughs> No, sir? Wow. You're not saying anything tonight? Well, <laughs> all right. Um, if that's good, I want to say peace to everybody. And uh, we really need a good party and stuff like this in the event. So I love what we're doing, and I couldn't do it without all of you. And that being said, we will adjourn the meeting at 758. The next meeting is to be discussed <laughs> for the date change. All right. Thank you. Good night.